Welcome back, Next Gen family, to another edition of Mentor Moments. Today, I am joined by the lovely Evan Weiner. Evan is the Global Head of Social Marketing for GoDaddy Pro and Acquisitions. Evan, thank you so much for being here with us today. You got it. Happy to be here. Absolutely. Uh, I, I'm so excited to dive in. We got lots of interesting stuff uh, to talk about down the pipe with regards to authenticity, community. But before we even get there, um, let, let's do a little bit of rapid fire questions. Let the people get to know uh, Evan a little bit more. So uh, we'll try to keep these nice and you know short and sweet, keep you on your toes. But uh, your first rapid fire question, what is one book that you would recommend everybody read right now? Ooh, goodness gracious. One book I'd recommend everyone to read. Well, so I'll be totally honest with you. I actually don't read a lot. I'm a, uh, you know, kind of a news junkie, not necessarily all the stuff that we're dealing with right now, all that spin and craziness. Um, but, but I will admit I'm, I, uh, am slightly addicted to, to wall street journal, for example. But what I would say actually to some of my fellow marketers is, um, CMO today in Wall Street Journal is a really nice kind of filtered, um, generally kind of senior level look at, um, you know, how marketing is driving commerce and sort of, uh, you know, some of the organizational aspects of it. So that's my, that's my immediate thought. That's what I'm, I'm reading the most. I love it. And I appreciate the, the honesty too, of not being like, oh, I'm just gonna, you know, make up a book here. But uh, Definitely an awesome resource too, and one that uh, even if you're not a marketer, I'm sure is uh, valuable to understand how people at the top are thinking about you know, marketing. Yep, absolutely. Uh, your, your next rapid fire question, what does your morning routine look like and, and what, uh, what do you do in order to set yourself up for success for the day ahead? Yes, so what I'll describe to you is actually, um, I'm seasoned, meaning it's, it's developed over time, but I wake up and work out early. Um, so I'm usually lifting a weight by the time, you know, 6 a.m. comes around. And I know you kind of, you probably hear that stuff, you know, get up at 3 a.m. and start charging and the most successful people wake up, you know, maybe there's something to be said about that. But um, that's what my morning routine is, is, is getting up, um, working out. It's kind of almost a hobby or pastime of mine too. So it, it fuels me in that way. It's not just about, it's the right thing to to do to be healthy it actually is something that i enjoy so get up have a snack um work out try to meditate when i can yes probably another cliche situation <laughs> but um uh i think it's about having one you know i like to work out and two um allowing yourself a little bit of you time before you're addressing other people's needs i i think that's wonderful and and i think uh, a lot of people can relate to and and uh it, you know, the more I do these, the more I'm like, yeah, maybe I should wake up a little bit earlier. You know, everybody yeah. seems to be uh, trending on the on the early side. But um, your, your final, final uh, rapid fire question, what is one productivity hack that helps you get ahead during the workday? One productivity hack. I mean, I think that, um, well, I can tell you two things on the flip side too. what what can screw up your productivity. Um, one hack, I think, you know, for me, sometimes um, segmenting time out mm. for different items helps a lot. Email is always going to be there. It's pervasive. I've turned off push notifications or anything with email. I check it often, but I have these dedicated times to do it. That definitely helps productivity. On the flip side, um, we all can be a victim to this. That is doom scrolling or like that literally knee jerk reaction, like, pick up my phone when I'm not making a decision and whatever. For me, working in social, it's, it's like in front of me half the time, you know, what's trending, all these things. That can be, that can negate that segmentation that I just described too. So, um, you know, all in all, it's, it's finding those dedicated pieces of time and focusing in, you know, as much as you can. Mm. I, I think that that's a, a great way to even segue from, you know, some rapid fires into more about, you, your, your work currently, uh, as, as somebody who kind of does work in, in social, how do you kind of maintain that, that distance, if you will, to kind of, you know, not get into the, the doomsday scrolling? Well, I, my track record is, is not perfect. I'd give myself a, probably a solid B plus and probably a B plus just because I've been 
doing this now for the better part of a decade. So it's taken time. Um, I, <laughs> I'm just like you, I, my phone and all these different stimuli and social are, are just can be a distraction. Um, you know, I think ultimately <laughs> one of the natural things is that there's plenty of work to do, right? So they're like, for me working in social there, um, uh, in some ways I'm being fed because I am actually creating, analyzing whatever within the social sphere. Um, so that in some cases, you know, can dissuade me from like needing to go and, and see exactly what's going on um, outside of my own workload. Um, but man, I don't, I, I would, I would say, you know, some of it's that and some of it is just try to make a concerted effort, like watch yourself grabbing for it and just, no, take it away. Mm -hmm. And and your and your your uh your score will be only so so for some time, but but maybe just being thoughtful about yeah. it now. I think one thing, you know, I pick up even from the beginning of our conversation here is uh, you're, you're a very authentic person. You talk a lot about, you know, authenticity and being able to even admit to like, hey, I'm not, you know, the most perfect at being able to stay, you know, off the scrolling or being, you know, even the beginning, you know, I don't read a lot, but I'm a big news guy. I think, um, you know, you talk a lot about authenticity and, and community in your marketing strategy. Um, uh, can you share more about this and, and maybe how you use this philosophy in your current role? Uh, at GoDaddy. Yeah, well, you know, I, I love that you bring up this topic. Um, it's really become, you know, thinking about um, uh, activating my work, doing my work, whatever, um, authentically and with kind of community in mind, um, really grounds me day in and day out. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's really a, kind of a, a great notion to, to work and live by. So, you know, for me thinking, you know, with um, brand marketing and performance marketing, but, you know, working in brand marketing, um, of course, with that social lens, I mean, authenticity is much like you or me, you know, it's kind of don't necessarily try to be something that you aren't. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean you shouldn't aspire, you know, to evolve and, and build new facets for yourself or your brand. Like that's, that's great, but it's kind of that fine line of um, really not moving away from what makes you special and your strengths, um, I think is, is one aspect. So literally coming to the community, coming to the market, current prospective customers, um, knowing exactly who you are, what you're good at and what, you know, you're not going to try to be is, you know, a guiding light. And, um, you know, also what I see is authenticity and, uh, you know, no matter what types of professionals, um, you know, are, are watching us or kind of absorbing this, whether you're a product person, an entrepreneur, marketing, et cetera. Um, you know, for me, it's obsessively seeking to provide value. Um, and so in social, it's, um, you know, no matter what message, creative, offer, whatever's being put out, is this providing the community perspective, current customers, value, you know, in their day. And particularly with social, where, where attention is all over the place, um, you know, your value proposition should be rock solid. So I, I see that as being, um, you know, integral to, to authenticity. And um, one other aspect to that, that I love, and so I mentioned, I, I think about this all the time, the authenticity, et cetera, probably even more a spotlight on the fact that, you know, in marketing and in social, et cetera, um, you've always got to remember, and I always remind myself too, um, now it's embedded in me that you're earning people's attention. Mm. You don't have a right to their attention. They don't owe you anything. You might think, you know, you, you probably know deep down in your heart too, especially if you're an entrepreneur and you have a breakthrough pro like, I know this is right for you. I do, you know, and there's something to be said about sort of that straightforward marketing of mm. this is for you. Check it out. That's okay. But you know, just remember that you're earning people's attention here. So make sure you're coming with your best foot forward. And if you don't have anything good to say, don't say it at all, you know, really. Um, and my last point too, uh, in regard to um, kind of the, the community aspect and being authentic too, um, it, it really plays into uh, each other, I think, is, um, you know, ultimately there's, I think there's kind of a range of, um, selfless to selfish when you think about promoting yourself marketing yourself whatever and you can you can 
work along that range. There's not like you must be on one side or on the other, but you know, I definitely work to anchor and would recommend to kind of anchor in that selfless side. So again, in social and dealing with customers, um, you know, always want to try to be a conversationalist and lift others up um, mm-hmm. rather than just talking about yourself. You know, you hear talking at versus talking with, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but uh, even something like a case study is a little bit selfish because you're saying, look, they're, they, they had so much success. They're, you know, see how much we helped them. Like, it's really ultimately still about us. Case studies are okay, not bashing them or anything, but, you know, really going to that selfless where you may, like in social, literally sh- share someone's work without a lick of branding on it. We are just here to inspire you via others, via others like you, like, and we'll say a few words, but then back up. You know, it's about, it's about you and your peers and helping each other win. Um, so that's being very authentic too, in my eyes. Yeah, I, I, so many things to, to pick out from there. Yeah. I, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's amazing. When I think about social and, and kind of how it's a, a evolved, uh, you know, over our lifetimes, and, and there is this element of, oh, you know, um, obviously the, you know, very popular Netflix documentary going on kind of uh, right now, The Social Dilemma. Um, yeah, uh, I, I've not seen either. I've just heard kind of, you know, through the grapevine of kind of this notion of um, it's not authentic. It's these snapshots of your life. And it seems like you and, and the team have found a way to actually uh, lift people up together and, and support people and use these channels uh, as a way for good instead of, you know, just showcasing what is selfish, you know, and kind of being more on the, the selfless side. So I think it's, it's yeah. truly uh, an amazing thing that you guys are doing. Yeah, it feels good when you're doing it too. You know what I mean? Like once you, um, in some industries or whatever, it may be more difficult than others. Um, you know, I'm working with uh, some really bright and eager minds that are, that are making their own way um, in, in the design and development world and building sites and, and all that exciting stuff. So there's a lot of great work to showcase, which is great. For some other industries, maybe a little bit tougher, but you can find totally, you know, uh, the, the great things that your customers are doing, no matter your product. So. Yeah. Uh, d- diving in here, even, even a little deeper, uh, in, in addition to you doing this, you know, obviously in, in the U S where we're both from, you know, you're in LA, I'm here in New York, you know, every, a lot of our viewers are kind of in this U S area and can understand our version of, of socials, but you're also doing this on a much more global level as well at, at GoDaddy working in many, many different markets. And as people, in the entrepreneur world and kind of this audience world, look to grow and scale. What, what is kind of the differences in markets and how do you work in multiple markets? What key learnings uh, do you take from, from this experience? Yeah, yeah, well, I, you know, it's a great question and it's been um, definitely a neat aspect. I'm, I'm lucky and happy to say that actually kind of that global element has um, followed me in a few different roles that I've had, even like some of the first working um, uh, with actually the Hong Kong Tourism Board, which was literally pitching Hong Kong, not only like, oh, are we doing business there? But like, you know, actually as someone in the US working to promote a location I'd never even been to too. And then now of course, you know, the, the global factor comes into play where it's a global business, you know? So there, there are markets out there and, and um, customers around the world that are being served and so, um, it's just literally in the framework, uh, and and I've been you know lucky enough to take that on. Now, um, you know how kind of how is that done? The best practices, etc. I think that well, one um, there was probably well there was probably there definitely was and will be again a time where we will be going to these different markets more. So you'll go immerse yourself as much as you can. That adds a little bit of of um, power to maybe your decisions when when working on these global lands having been there but regardless of if you can have visited the place have been there or not um it's very likely uh not 100 percent, but likely that you're going to have colleagues or leaders or some sort of affiliation that's that's planted there or that's native in that market um that's the case with me whereas there are some team members meanwhile they're not managing my function, but there are team members that are native speakers in various parts of EMEA, lean on them. Um, now, what I think what I mean by that is, is, you know, 
essentially cross check your ideas uh, as much as possible on top of your own knowledge, because you're probably a competent person that can study a bit and understand um, uh, the difference in regional goals, et cetera. So you can be self-sufficient, but I think kind of one of the key takeaways, best practice is consult them. You know, I think some of the smartest people, and maybe you've heard this before, and I continue to remind myself, we're always learning, is the smartest people, you know, aren't the ones that know everything. It's the ones that are like smart enough to crowdsource, hey, I know you're good at what. So take that notion to heart, work with those, um, uh, ask questions, et cetera, et cetera. And I think one of the aspects to when I say that, that I'm not blind to, that I think is important to bring up is that some viewers may think like, well, it's easy to say, but gosh, everyone's so busy. They might even kind of like snub me if I ask for help or whatever. So um, one, you know, be as persistent as is appropriate and whatnot. But I guess the point is, is don't give up if you're trying to, um, uh, you know, source some assistance or thought leadership, like with a different region or a lot of things for that matter. But um, find where that common value is with the other person too. So you might even be sharing a goal if it's the same business, like, hey, we're both trying to create new revenue, you know, for this region or whatever, or new customers. Um, but I think, you know, when asking for that help globally or, or getting their um, ideas, et cetera, it's kind of that reminder of, hey, you know, you're providing a lot of value that is gonna help both of us here. Or, you know, maybe it's just as simple as, you're being a huge help. Like you're, you're driving not only like my initiatives, but you're helping this entire team. And it kind of, you know, um, if they weren't already willing, it'll kind of help make those stakeholders willing. Yeah, and, and I think even uh, leaning into this, and, and you talk a lot about the importance of being able to cross collaborate and, and yeah. work with people. And, um, you know, it seems uh, obviously a hugely important thing and not enough people talk about, you know, kind of the EQ side of, of being able to, you know, do business. Uh, for you and, and the work you're doing now, what, what tips do you have for managing, you know, your team, for managing teams, for being able to keep people motivated? Um, as you work with them and try to grow with them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, inspiring others and aiding in their success mm -hmm. is kind of is like my why, you know, and I remind myself that that took that, that literally took an exercise to figure that out. So if you can kind of sit there and think like the very bare bones, why are you, why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you launching your business, et cetera? Anyway, so like that's, that's part of my why and why I want to continue to grow so that I can, continue to mentor others. But I think um, uh, I sort of think of it as, you know, one is empathize, you know, and remind yourself to do so. We, uh, before we even started this, you know, you had mentioned in these crazy times, which we can all relate to. It's actually a bit of an opportunity to um, empathize with others, you know? So literally going to your team um, and saying, Hey, are you, how are you doing this week? I know that we're all, there's all kinds of things going on and unique stressors. Like is all, is all good. And if it is cool, move on, whatever. But, um, uh, those are important things, you know, to just show that, Hey, I'm here. And I realize that you have a life and we both have lives and it sounds simple, but I think we could all realize that, yeah. Hey, yeah, my boss doesn't do that all that much, or I don't really do that. I'm nice to my, you know, mm. um, team, but I'm not, I'm not going that extra step and saying, Hey, you know, Molly, I don't know where that name came from, but it came up. Hey, Molly, you know, are, are you doing, is everything okay? Can I help you in any way? I know it's whatever. So that's like, like kind of one aspect. And then, um, encourage. I, you could probably tell, you know, I, I can definitely uh, have a conversation and <laughs> talk about things and stuff. Um, so I also like to do a lot of positive reinforcement. It's like, it's native to me though. Like it's, it's just kind of who I am. So I, I, um, I don't overdo it, but I definitely am saying, Hey, you, you, like you totally saved us all a bunch of time. Like you're doing so great. Even if it's on every other day, you know what I mean? Because we, there's going to be criticism too. And nothing ever really negative, but, and we're criticizing ourselves. So I want to be there to remind you like, you're kicking butt and making a difference, you know? And it's literally as simple as what the words I just said. Just, yeah. you just leave it at that, you know? Energizing, reminding that every day is an opportunity that they're making a difference every day. 
Um, uh, it, and you can frame that in any different way, but I think that's, that's, you know, a good thing. And, and, you know, if you can too, I speak a little bit, you know, for myself, my own style, but when I think about managers that I've had that have been so good and have, um, made a, a attributable difference in my career, they are champions, you know, um, and uh, become that like mama bear. Not necessarily like, well, yes, defensive, but, um, uh, you know, just stand by them. What, you, you, if you don't want to be pushing your team forward, getting them promotions, whatever, then you might need to do a little bit of soul searching. And if you don't want to do it on a fast track, even, I'll go there, you need to do a little soul searching because I, I know I want to be elevating um, and doing whatever I can to make the case to continue to elevate um, my own team. So that champion part for sure too. Mm. It was, uh, it was wonderful. You got three E's and, and a C. You got empathize, you got energize, uh, you got encourage and, and champion. I, I like okay. it. We'll almost, see we almost a, true. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have, this, we'll have to think of an E for that champion. Exactly. Uh, Evan, somehow we've, we've made it almost to the end of our time here. I mean, it flew by, but, uh, but before we end, I, I always like to end these with thinking about the future. Um, and what comes next? And obviously you're talking to, you know, an audience of kind of next generation uh, leaders, young individuals, people that are building. Uh, what excites you about the next generation, about the next few years of, of our uh, human existence together? Yes. Um, you know, I think that in addition to kind of, you know, new ideas and new approaches, things, whatever, that, that are or that are or should be inherent in sort of a new front and new pros getting out into the market and, and, you know, with big ideas. Um, you know, I'll go back to, to one of our E's here being that empathy, mm -hmm. um, to be super timely, you know, what we're dealing with right now, especially if you're younger or newer in your career or pivoting in your career, you know, whatever it may be. Um, you know, we are coming out of this, a different, uh, a different, humankind oh my gosh that's so dramatic but really you know where where we we've all just been checked really hard right yeah. and like have had to um take on new struggles that we've never before etc cetera, etc cetera. so i think that what's exciting to me for sort of the next generation um is coming to work coming to to market with ideas that have um, kind of an inherent sense of empathy, you know, and, and perhaps maybe that much more sort of um, self and mutual respect, you know, for one another. Mm. Uh, and I think that can manifest itself in just little ways too. It's not like it's going to be a brand new dawn, but I think that that's going to, um, that's one of the bright points when I think about the, the next generation. Yeah, su such a positive way to, to yeah. end, end the interview as well. Evan, thank you so much for being here with us for all of these little tidbits. Uh, can't wait to go back and, and let everybody else check this out too. So thank you for being here with us. Of course. Thanks for having me.